savers and some suckers over here. So that's all good. We're just going to suck the air out and... <laughs> Welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And today we are doing something new. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. <laughs> so we are adding to the pantry. You know, our big goals are to just have a pantry full of all the things that we could possibly need um, and really just have a limited amount of stuff that we need to go to the store for at any given time. So we have a food saver. Yeah. Somebody sent me the food saver. I have one it's one for such a long time. <laughs> right there. Right there. Um, finally got one thank you so much and then I got the mason jar attachment which sucks the air out of the mason jars and then you can you you can seal like dry goods um, liquid you can do any kind of stuff. marinades yeah it's just like a extra to canning and it takes a whole lot less time <laughs> it looks like this right here yeah so it's just this little white piece and the hose actually is attached to the food saver but this little white piece that's a normal mason jar size and then it comes with a wide mouth as well yeah so very excited about that. I had a lot of stuff left over as you saw in our last video from the harvest celebration. If you haven't seen the last video, we'll pop it up on the end screen here so you can bounce back and yeah. check it. And we also bought in bulk at our Amish store. So I had a lot of stuff that I needed to get stored because I don't use like cornmeal. I don't use a whole lot of cornmeal in everyday life. Right. But I bought it in bulk, so I needed to save it. So for that kind of stuff, it's perfect. We had a bunch of leftover candy from Halloween and the harvest celebration and grandparents. <laughs> and I want to save it. I mean, that's mm -hmm. good stuff. I, so many years we've thrown away leftover candy because we're not, we don't eat much of it. And it just gets tossed yeah. and that's just wasteful. Um, you know, we can store it and use it. So I actually got this idea from Pine Knot Family Farm, Tasha. She's one of my really good friends. Yep. And I saw her do this one day and I was like, okay, that's, that's happening. Right. Because <laughs> so. it's so simple. Why not? Right. Yeah. You're just sucking there out of it. It's still in the jar and there you go. Yep. How long does it last for? Basically, uh, most of the stuff can last one to two years. Um, there's different guidelines on stuff, but if you get a food saver, it comes with this handy dandy little booklet and it tells you all the different stuff and how long it lasts. But dry goods and stuff like that are about one to two years. So that's just super cool. You it know, is. next Easter or whatever, when we need candy, we can pull it out of the pantry and not have to buy it. That's or right. When I need cornmeal, I just go unseal it. and. The coolest thing is you can seal it right back. You don't, it's not a one-time unseal type thing. You can unseal it, get a cup or two cups, whatever you need, and then seal it right back and you're good to go. And we're, that's really the purpose of this video is to show you how simple it is and how handy dandy a food saver is to have. We also got Thanksgiving coming up yep. and you think about all the, the meat and stuff mm -hmm. like that that we're going to have left over that we can just vacuum seal. Yeah. Um, that's a little bit different than this. Is, right. Yeah. Actually, but actually use it in the bag, pop it in the freezer. Uh, and have all that leftover because you know yeah. you're going to have plenty of leftover ham and turkey, right? Yeah. So it's just uh, that's kind of the purpose of this, and we're going to show you how to use it. It's super simple. Let's do it. All right, so first I'm going to show you what all I am storing, and then we'll show you how to do it. So we have some wheat thins that we got from our local Amish store. Um, they were really good, but they weren't Raylan's favorite. However, I want to store them because I don't want them to get stale, and eventually we'll eat them. We might reseason them and rebake them. I think that would be really cool. But it's just a good snack, you know, it might not be our most favorite thing, but in a pinch, if we need some to eat, here it is. Um, these are all half gallon mason jars, by the way. I got a big bulk of them on Amazon. Some of them actually came broken, but the majority were good. So the next thing is some butterscotch um, chocolate chips or whatever you want to call them, chips, butterscotch chips. 
Um, we use them in baking and stuff like that. I actually had these in our pantry from something we had baked. I can't remember what it was. And I pulled them out today because they're still good. Um, I smelled them and they're still good. And I want to be able to store them and maybe use them for this Christmas. So in this kind of instance, what you do is cut the corner off. Cut a very small little corner tip off. And then that allows it to suck the air out of the bag as well. We've also got our dehydrated cherry tomatoes. We did these in our dehydrator and they've been fine so far. I've been keeping an eye on them, but I want to go ahead and get them sealed because we don't use them too often. We use them in pastas and stuff. And we've actually already sealed this one and it's good to go. So it's doing awesome. Another thing is some coffee creamer. I've got two of them. We bought a huge tub of coffee creamer for the harvest celebration and we don't really use it but I didn't want it to go to waste because if we ever need some creamer and can't get any we've got a whole lot of it that will last a really long time so I'm excited about that. Next is cane sugar. I buy cane sugar in bulk and it's getting winter time and you know sometimes you get mice and you don't want it to get in it so we're gonna store it in this and that was a whole lot. I had some left over too from the harvest celebration. Next is candy. I've got two big things of candy from Halloween and it's all different varieties Whoppers, Kit Kats, M&Ms, Milk Duds, all kinds of stuff. Um, some lifesavers and some suckers over here so that's all good we're just gonna suck the air out and <laughs> she just came and got her shoes kissed. All right. <laughs> Next is two things of yellow cornmeal that we bought in bulk at our Amish store. I don't use it too often, but I like to have it on hand. So now we can store that. I made a mess with the coffee creamer apparently. Um, and then last but not least, our packets of sweetener. We don't use these either, but we bought them for the harvest celebration because we had coffee. And one is stevia and the other is just a re regular sweetener type thing that you get from Walmart. And we're gonna store them along with the coffee creamer because if anything ever happens, we'll have creamer and sugar. How cool is that? <laughs> one other important thing to note, um, I use these for everything, for my herbs that I dry, for teas, for all kinds of stuff. And I put one in each um, half gallon of these. They're the food grade desiccant packs. So they're really important to put in your jars and they keep the moisture out. Um, they're the moisture absorbers. They're, you know, you see them everywhere, but these are food grades. So it's fine to put in your food and they will not harm you whatsoever. And they're super cheap on Amazon. You get a huge pack of them, 250 of them, and they were very cheap. So you have to have them. I think she's trying to fatten me up for the winter with all this sugar. I think most of it was all sugar, don't y'all? So now it's time to show you all how simple it is to do this. So this is a, a Food Saver brand Food Saver, and it's very cool, it's very nice, and the attachment we're gonna be using today is actually this. So it comes with two, a wild mouth and a normal mouth when you buy the accessory that does come separate than the Food Saver. Um, but this is our Food Saver that we use. It has a lot of instructions right here on the top on how to use it. Um, but this is the one that we have. All of this stuff's gonna be in our Amazon store, which is linked in our description if you're wanting to use the things that we are showing in this video. So it's very simple. Like I said, this part comes with it. It does come with an attachment that you have to take off. And then here is the, actually the attachments that you have to get separately. So this is the wide mouth. It does come with a normal wide mouth, but it's so simple. You just put the top right on there until it's completely sealed. You put your lid on and it you know it's just laid on there make sure your uh, the ends of your jar are clean and you just do the lid you do not put the band on correct and then you just put that on there until it's kind of snug and then on here if you want to get in here powers on it's on dry and then we come over here to accessory And that's it. So, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to take the lid off because that'll unseal it. So you pop this part off first, and then that loosens the mason jar attachment. And it comes off very easy. 
and that is sealed tight. Sealed tight. So don't forget to put your desk kit packs in. Also leave a one inch headspace. That is um, crucial. You have to have a one inch headspace. And then not your bands, just your lids. And that's it. Very so simple. Let's run through them. This is addiction, isn't it, babe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm stealing everything. At this so, point. you all just saw how quick and easy that was to seal that up. <laughs> and now we're moving to smallmouth because Jen has a bunch of like powdered sugar and flour and all this stuff that we use on a normal basis. However, there's sometimes like powdered sugar specifically that gets used mainly at Christmas time. Yeah. Like when we're making treats and candy and stuff like that. So, we're going to vacuum seal <laughs> these. Seal it, <laughs> it all up. So, let's get at these. Here's the small mouth, or the normal mouth. Exactly the same as you would expect. It's just normal size rather than wide mouth. So how awesome is it to add all of this to our pantry, which already has so many canned goods in it, and now we're starting on our dry goods storage. This is the first of that. We don't have any dry goods storage at this point, but we're really, really excited to expand that and keep going. I want to have, if, maybe equal to the canned goods maybe more um, i'm pretty excited about stuff like that so this is a new journey for us a lot of you are probably thinking wow i've been doing this for years <laughs> um, others of you might not know what this attachment was and hopefully you can join me but um, it's important to have your food stored uh, we don't consider ourselves preppers but that's not a negative thing to me um, if people were to call us preppers i would be okay with that um, we just like to be prepared, so this is the start of that, and I hope you join us. If you're already on this journey, then let me know all the kinds of things that you store besides canned food. Um, you know, your dry goods, let me know what you do, and I don't know, it's going to be fun, so we'll see. <laughs> so I do have one more thing to show you, which is another um, food preservation thing. It's how to store eggs, and I am super excited about it. Um, I can't wait to share this with you all. Um, it's a tried and true way to preserve your eggs, so I'm excited to share it with you all. So we're going to do that next. All right, so now we're going to do our eggs. So I found this on the internet years ago when we had our first chicken flock, and we had eggs just like crazy. We were giving them away. Um, we were selling some, but then I decided that I had to stop giving them because I wanted to have eggs during the winter time. As you know, chickens will slow down, sometimes completely stop laying. Ours right now, we have 27-ish to 30-ish chickens that are laying, and we have almost 50 more that aren't laying. <laughs> but the ones that are laying have really slowed down, and we're only getting like one to two, sometimes three eggs a day. So, a few months ago, I started saving all my eggs, and I'm going to show you all how I'm doing that because it will last us over winter. It lasts eight months. That's a 100% success rate, eight months, and, you know, that brings you right into the spring season when they start laying again, which we'll have babies that start laying too, so we'll have all kinds of eggs at that point. But over the winter time, we'll have plenty. So, I found this on the internet. It works great. Um, unfortunately, after that, we lost our chicken flock, so I haven't got to do it much, but I'm going to do it again, and I can't wait to have eggs this winter. So I have 11 dozen eggs that I'm going to put into this bucket, and that way we can have eggs for the next eight months until the chickens are laying again. So I'm going to show you how to do it. It is very simple. This is an old tried and true recipe that it will work. I promise you that. There's nothing about it that won't work. Um, like I said, they can stay in your pantry for eight months with a 100% success rate. Some people have done it for years, a year to two years. It just depends on you. And, you know, you can do the sink or float test and do all that. So we have a five-gallon bucket here. It has four gallons of water in it. I wanted to save myself room because I don't know how much the water is going to rise when I put my eggs in. So this is your preserving 
method. This is pickling lime. You can get this at Walmart, Rural King, Tractor Supply. You can get it off Amazon if you don't have any of those stores. It's just a pickling lime. Um, some people use it for cucumbers, pickles, all kinds of stuff, but it also works as a preservant. And that's what we're gonna put in here. So we have four gallons of water, and this is 16 ounces. Your method of measurement is one ounce of pickling lime to one quart of water. There's the chickens. <laughs> Those are the ones that are not laying yet. <laughs> so one ounce to one quart, and that's by weight. That's not by measurement or whatever, it's by weight. So this is 16 ounces and we have four quarts of water and that equals out perfectly. So if you're doing it with four gallons with a five gallon bucket, just know that you can use one whole pack of this. It's not the slender packs. Um, it's the Miss Wages, but it's the thicker ones. So you'll know what, you're, what I'm talking about when you see them. It's one pound, um, 454 grams. So if you're buying it offline, there it is. But we'll also link it in the description. So this is, has four gallons of water and we're gonna go ahead and put in all our pickling lime. Dusty. A little dusty, huh? A little bit. All right, so now we're just gonna stir it all up. You can see how milky it is. So it's really cool if you have a clear bucket and you can see your eggs. We did not, so roll king bucket for the win. <laughs> hey, one thing about that roll king bucket though, when you buy a bucket, 50% of all the proceeds are donated to a veteran. There you go. The, the military. And That's it comes with cool. a lid, because you have to have a lid. Make sure you have a lid with your bucket. So any kind of bucket that you're getting, um, you can use any kind of container. It doesn't have to be a bucket. You can use, you know, an old time crock. You can use any kind of container, just anything that has a lid. And it depends on how many eggs you're doing too. I mean, if you don't have 10 dozen, 10 to 12 dozen, then you can use something much smaller. You just wanna make sure it has a top on it so that nothing can get in, no insects, no rodents, fruit flies, all that kinds of stuff. So it is dissolved and all mixed together. You can see how milky it is. Wanna drink it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's a little salty. A little salty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we have a dozen eggs here. I have so many to put in, but I'm gonna show you all my first dozen that I'm gonna do. And you're just gonna, well, you want them to be clean. Um, try to do this with your clean eggs, not your dirtiest eggs. If you have chickens, um, it's your choice whether you wash your eggs or not. We don't, we don't wash our eggs because it provides a coating on them that makes them better for us and makes them last longer. So try to get your cleanest ones that you have, you know, make sure there's straw in their nesting boxes, hay, all that kinds of good stuff. And just try to use your cleanest. So I'm gonna start putting them in and you just put them all the way to the bottom. When there's none else in there, they're just gonna kind of float around. Ooh, it's cold. All right, so I'm just gonna finish up putting the rest of our eggs in and um, let me know if you all try this. I promise you it will work 100%. It is an awesome, awesome way to preserve your eggs over the winter and to have them all winter long. Um, if you come back in a few months, we will show you that they're 100% great and um, make sure you keep it in your pantry or some kind of room. It doesn't have to be a cool spot. Um, just put it in there and that's where the eight months comes in. Um, you know, if it gets really hot and humid in there, then you're not probably not going to have it past that eight months. But if it's a nice area, um, shaded, you know, it doesn't have to be cool, but not too hot and humid, then you're good to go. And make sure you put your lid on. That'll keep everything out and keeps them safe. And that's it. It's really easy. You can also do this with any kind of eggs, um, chickens, ducks, guineas, whatever, wherever you get your eggs from. My arm is numb. I bet it is. That was some cold water, my bad. Um, we do recommend if say, like, so we're doing 11 dozen right now, um, but our chickens are still laying and all those we're gonna be preserving. So what I would do is I would take your 11 dozen in one bucket and eat those first, but don't be adding new eggs to it. Get you a second bucket going. That way you know you're eating the oldest first. And then that second one, you can kind of date it and say I started on, you know, 11, 15, and so you know that nothing's older than that date in that bucket, if that makes sense. So just, maybe just work it till you have two so you're not putting brand new fresh eggs and three month old <laughs> eggs. So 
but that's kind of just a minor suggestion. Yep. So you've got to see how to what do we what do we call that air locking mason jars or sucking vacuum the ceiling? vacuum sucking ceiling the air out right sucking magic. the air out <laughs> magic straight up <laughs> magic um, and then you got to see how to preserve your eggs and all the stuff is things that are extended on top of canning and fermenting yep. so you know that's kind of the top two that people think of when they're preserving their harvest um, but you also got to preserve your eggs from your chickens so you can have winter stuff preserve all that dry goods um, I know a lot of people ask how we do that and. There it is. Yep. All right, y'all. I think this is where we leave you for today. <laughs> we love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.